85 million years ago, dinosaurs dominate the landscape. What little land there is. For most of the planet is covered by water. And these vast oceans are a cauldron of violence, a world much more dangerous than the land above. This is the brutal world where an ultimate predator is born and bred. This mosasaur was the most dangerous creature in the most dangerous ocean ever. It's 45 feet long. It's the size of a Greyhound bus. And we'll bring the monster back to life, revealing its killing secrets. This is a mosasaur, and this is a monster resurrected. This is mosasaur country, or at least it was. Where I'm standing would have been the bottom of the Western Interior Sea about 85 million years ago. Mike Everhart is one of the world's leading experts on mosasaurs. The horizon would have been ocean for as far as you could see. The, the seaway stretched for hundreds of miles from where we're standing. At this time, there are no polar ice caps as the climate is warmer. Sea levels rise until well over 80% of the planet is covered with water. The center of North America was covered with water from Nevada to Missouri, from the Gulf of Mexico on up past the Arctic Circle. The floor of this ocean, known today as the Kansas Chalk, was created by billions and billions of nanofossils, the shells of tiny plankton that drifted down and were deposited on the seabed. What we're looking at here is literally hundreds of thousands of years of deposition on the sea bottom of the Western Interior Sea. What we see back here is roughly an inch per 700 years to build up that much chalk. So there's untold billions of these animals there. And entombed in this chalk are giant fossils of Mosasaur. The bones of the beast are first uncovered in North America in the late 1830s. This is where the mystery of the Mosasaur begins, because nobody can say just what this creature is. It has been puzzling scientists since 1780, when a massive skull is found near the Mose River in Holland. The first guy who looked at it thought it was part of a fossil whale. It was also thought to be the jaws of a crocodile. Uh, a giant lizard, and one person even suggested it was a dragon slain by a medieval knight. A French paleontologist described it as a mosasaur, meaning most river reptile. Eventually, the American bones are matched up with the earlier fossils found in Europe and correctly identified as a mosasaur. Over the next 80 years, as scientists begin the serious hunt for dinosaur fossils, a pattern emerges. In every corner of the globe, they find mosasaur bones. This points to one conclusion, that no other predator has ever dominated the planet like the mosasaur. This guy weighed eight tons. It could easily swallow a full-grown human male whole, just like a tater tot. The scientists investigating mosasaurs realized that nothing on Earth could have stopped them. It took a cosmic catastrophe to end their reign. As scientists explore Mosasaur evolution, their investigation yields a startling revelation. The ocean's top predator came from the land. 
These sea monsters began their journey as tiny lizards at the mercy of giant dinosaurs. How they became colossal mosasaurs remains a mystery until 1989, when a fossil hunter named Van Turner finds a very unusual skeleton. Turner takes the fossil to Mike Polson, a paleontologist at Southern Methodist University. When Van came across the first pieces of Dallasaurus, he immediately recognized it as some sort of mosasaur. Named Dallasaurus after its discovery in Dallas, Texas, the bones were pieced together. It is then that scientists connect the dots. Dallasaurus is an interim form, a missing link between mosasaurs and the tiny terrestrial lizards that are their ancestors. The lizards, dubbed Aegialosaurs, face a constant threat from the larger, fiercer dinosaurs, so they flee to the ocean. Three million years later, they evolve into Dallasaurus. Their toes evolve into webbed feet so they can no longer function on land. In the span of six million years, they grow from a small one-meter lizard into the giant 15-meter mosasaur. The mosasaur's development reveals that even in evolution, timing is everything. Warm temperatures and shallow seas create an abundant food chain in the ocean. This is a perfect environment for animals to take to the water. But these life-giving seas can quickly turn deadly, even for mosasaurs. There is competition everywhere. Everything in the oceans then would have looked very strange to us today. All the fish seem to have been armed with mouthfuls of teeth. It seemed like everything in that ocean was a predator and just built for killing things. Like Zephactinus, a bony fish that is armed with a mouthful of long, needle-like teeth. Or the plesiosaurs, marine reptiles and top predator for over a hundred million years. They come in two lethal varieties. One hunts and kills using speed and agility, the other is a behemoth, so mammoth nothing dares challenge it. And of course, there are the sharks. These predators were around a hundred million years before dinosaurs had ever roamed the earth. This is a tooth from a large shark that lived during this time, during the age of Mo oh, mosasaurs swam in this ocean. It's from a shark called Cretoxorana mantelli, the Ginsu shark. And I called it that specifically because it's sliced and diced. The Ginsu is a giant shark, reaching lengths of seven and a half meters. It dwarfs any modern great white. This shark was literally able to bite through bone. We know that because we find pieces of mosasaur that have literally been severed from the bodies, swallowed, partially digested, and then regurgitated again. For mosasaur to survive, it had to change its land-based behavior, tearing out a place for itself at the very top of the food chain. But how did this creature evolve into such a relentless, effective killer? were lucky. We managed to avoid meeting the Mosasaur.
95 million years ago, Mosasaur is just a small lizard forced to flee into the ocean. Within six million years, it grows into one of the most successful predators of all time. Millions of years of evolution created the perfect formula for a perfect killer. But just what is the perfect formula that makes Mosasaur the apex predator? First and foremost, breathing. Mosasaurs can spend long hours submerged in the sea and, like whales, rarely have to come up for air. And then there's food. Fish are nutritious, but they're fast and evasive. To catch them, mosasaurs must develop the skills of an efficient hunter. Another part of the formula is hearing. In the water, sound location becomes a prime method for hunting. Mosasaurs modify their terrestrial ear into a super amplification system that makes sounds 38 times louder. In his studies of the Mosasaur, paleontologist Dr. James Lamb has been able to reconstruct the creature's hearing mechanism. This little piece fits in this pit and moves back and forth. And this piece fits here and a small movement and this first piece creates a large movement in this one. So it's a system that's finely tuned for conducting sound through water. Even though sound can lead a hunter to the prey, it's difficult to detect a target if it's in murky water. But mosasaurs have the advantage as they use their keen sense of smell inherited from their land-based ancestors. A mosasaur like this would have had a tongue that would have functioned exactly like a monitor lizard's tongue. The reason why the tongue is forked is so that the animal can smell in two different directions at the same time. This is smelling in stereo. A further addition to the killing formula is sonar. The last piece in the puzzle is this set of nerves that run down the side of the upper jaw and especially are concentrated here in the snout. And it's a system for detecting the pressure wave given off by the prey. Mosasaurs use this pressure wave sonar to hunt much like modern killer whales use echolocation. All these adaptations mean mosasaurs have a good chance of locating dinner, but they still have to catch it. And chasing down fast, elusive prey requires jet-like speed. To find out how a seven-ton monster propels itself, scientists study animals still hunting in our waters, alligators. They have another piece of the formula, a massive tail. Along with crocodiles, alligators have a long, flattened tail shape similar to mosasaurs. They use the whip-like action of their tails to catch their prey. One of the things you notice, first off, when you look at a mosasaur, is fully half the length is the tail. Mosasaurs retained their terrestrial lizard shape except for the tail, which evolved from a round, snake-like shape into a wide, flat paddle. If you look at the vertebra on the tail, they have expanded bony struts, top and bottom, for the swimming organ that helps them swim. Using modern alligators and crocodiles as a comparison, Scientists estimate a mosasaur can reach a top speed of 50 kilometers an hour. Its whip-like tail is good for quick acceleration, but not sustained high-speed chases. Fish are built to swim fast and far. Mosasaurs won't win a marathon, so they have to strike quickly.
This means this enormous beast has to somehow hide its 15-meter body and ambush its prey. Imagine that this animal is sitting on the bottom, takes a deep breath, it just waits there for something to swim by close enough that it can get that sustained burst of speed to go out and catch it. Speed and surprise are two critical elements, but mosasaurs also need agility. That's where the paddles come in. They propel themselves with the tail, they steer with the paddles. These paddles are short and strong, allowing this long lizard to make tight turns. Like flaps on an airplane wing, the paddles create drag, which makes them turn. For mosasaurs to be successful underwater, there was one land-based trait they absolutely had to jettison, their sensitive inner ear. The inner ear controls a creature's sense of balance. For land-based predators, maintaining balance is critical. If they stumble, their prey escapes. But in water, animals move in every direction, like a gyroscope. An animal with a sensitive inner ear can quickly become dizzy and disorientated. Over the millennia, the mosasaur's inner ear begins to reduce the sensitivity, allowing them to quickly twist and spin with no sickening side effects. These evolutionary refinements created a mega beast. The mosasaur can locate, chase and catch their prey. But catching is not enough. The mosasaur has to eat and they didn't have the seas all to themselves. 95 million years ago, Mosasaurus had some serious competition from a familiar dweller of the deep, the shark. Prehistoric sharks, like their modern cousins, are vicious and durable, traveling vast distances, ripping apart any creature that gets in their way. Sharks had been around for over 250 million years by the time mosasaurs had evolved. At that time, the largest, fiercest shark in the water was the giant Ginsu shark. The Ginsu would have, of course, looked very much like a modern great white, a very big, heavy-bodied shark. At a length of seven and a half meters, the aptly named Ginsus are over three meters longer than an average great white. With mosasaurs and Ginsu sharks hunting in the same water, one thing is certain. There will be battles. There was quite a competitive relationship going on when the big sharks and the, the mosasaurs were running into each other frequently. And at, at least at first, the mosasaurs were, were losing a lot. There's definite evidence that sharks attack mosasaurs. You can see right here that there are clear bite marks from the arc of the mouth of a shark that was attacking. These big sharks carved up a lot of mosasaurs. So we find shed teeth, we find bones that are severed during this time. While an adult mosasaur can hold its own against a Ginsu, there are other mosasaurs vulnerable to attack. The sharks would have been pretty much like modern sharks in that they would have, have attacked young animals, injured animals, sick animals, things like that. With Ginsus constantly on the prowl, infant mosasaurs are tempting targets. For years, scientists found strange fossil remains of mosasaurs, jaws with the teeth dissolved away, partial skulls and bones that appeared etched by acid. Where these remains came from was a mystery. And then they worked it out. Shark puke. The sharks would kill a small mosasaur, eat it, 
but they would regurgitate portions of the thing that had the teeth in it and some of the heavier bones. This is a group of bones, all that remains of a small mosasaur that was eaten by a shark. Ginsus prey on mosasaurs that are sick or injured. When the shark senses vulnerability, they close in for the kill. Sharks provide a good example of the feeding frenzy. When the smell of blood hits the water, all bets are off. But as mosasaurs evolved and became bigger, the tide of this battle began to turn. Everything, including Ginsu shark, becomes prey. A shark might be swimming around and trying to feed on a school of fish or other prey, and this mosasaur comes up behind him and grabbed it before the shark or the other prey knew what was happening and takes him and, and kind of swallows him in one gulp. Scientists even believe a giant mosasaur could scare off a school of sharks, stealing their hard-earned prey. Without the skills to compete with mosasaurs, the Ginsu's reign as the ocean's top predator is over. Although the Ginsu shark ruled for 15 million years, it took mosasaurs only 5 million years to wipe them out. With no place to hide and nothing left to eat, the super shark becomes extinct. The next clash for the Mosasaur would be to face one of the largest predators to ever roam the ocean's depths. These aquatic reptiles had reigned for over 100 million years, and they weren't about to give up without a fight. 82 million years ago, the Mosasaur kills off its prime competition, the Ginsu shark. But with this opponent gone, Mosasaur isn't the only mega beast swimming the depths. It faces a group of giant lethal predators with an equally violent attitude. Plesiosaurs. The short-necked plesiosaur looked like a dolphin from hell, growing to lengths of four and a half meters and having long bills filled with needle-sharp teeth. The long-necked plesiosaurs have a body the size of an elephant with a two-ton, eight-meter long neck. This creature's massive size makes it nearly invulnerable to attack. Mosasaur has its work cut out. They're two nasty enemies with two very different hunting styles. The short necks are fast and furious. They're basically going to chase a fish down. It's a high-speed race. The long necks have a secret weapon. These are sort of the stealth fighters of the Cretaceous. They've got a neck several times the length of the rest of the body, and they can literally surprise a school of fish because the head gets there so far in front of the rest of the body that the fish haven't really cued in that it's there yet. Mosasaurs developed the skills to battle both these rivals. The short-necked plesiosaurs are fast, but just not fast enough. At over 12 meters, long-necked plesiosaurs use their size to scare off attackers. But the Mosasaur turns its opponent's former advantage into an opportunity. It attacks the most vulnerable target. This is not an easy kill. The massive neck weighs two tons and is held together by steel-like ligaments, bones and muscles. But Mosasaur can generate enough torque to render this superstructure useless.
Faced with extinction, the plesiosaurs changed their hunting strategy. They find a way to coexist by getting out while the going is good, migrating to seas where there are fewer mosasaurs. Mosasaurs are the most successful predators to ever live in the ocean. In the course of five million years, they simply obliterate their competition. Mosasaurs rule the seas. But like many apex predators, mosasaurs are solitary creatures. The only reason they seek other mosasaurs is to breed. When it comes to mating, scientists base mosasaur behavior on today's monitor lizards. And it's usually the male trying to drive the female out of his territory after mating has happened. So you talk about a short honeymoon, and they will occasionally sort of uh, swim up and give, if you will, a, a love bite to the female that says, time for you to go. And this kind of aggressive behavior doesn't just play out during mating season. As mosasaurs become the dominant ocean species, an uncivil war begins. We've got the fossil evidence that shows that mosasaurs killed other mosasaurs and they didn't eat them. I mean, it wasn't for food. Like many top species, once mosasaurs tame their world, they turn on each other. This will to kill is unstoppable. And where there's a will, there's a way. To demonstrate how it kills, we need to resurrect a monster. Because this mega beast carries one huge advantage, a big mouth. We've got an animal here, he doesn't chew you to pieces, he just swallows you in one chunk. Successful predators are efficient predators, and mosasaurs define efficiency. They were able to feed on large prey items, uh, got a lot of energy with not a lot of energy output, and that made them mega predators in a very short time. The biggest advantage was their skull. Once you were in this trap, there was no way out except to go down the throat. If you look at the teeth, they're used for subduing the prey, not for chewing. In fact, a mosasaur didn't chew its food. It tried to swallow the biggest pieces possible. You might say it had bad table manners. If you look at a modern-day Komodo dragon, uh, they do the same thing. They might take a, a whole goat leg and try to swallow it all in one bite. Well, a Komodo dragon can get away with this because they're terrestrial. So there's a foot and a half, two feet of goat leg sticking out the front of their mouth. They just slap their face into the ground and try to push it in their mouth. Mosasaur couldn't do any of that. So what they've done is to basically make a toothed conveyor belt to help sort of tractor the prey down its throat. You can look at mosasaur fossils, and you can look at modern analogs that have a skull that works in a broadly analogous way. But sometimes building a model tells you something you just can't find out any other way. Working with real FX in California, USA, Dr. Lamb builds a life-size mosasaur skull, complete with a set of death-inflicting jaws. The massive steel jaws are powered by pneumatics instead of muscles and ligaments. Never thought I'd see a steel mosasaur skull, but this is very cool looking. We've got three pneumatics, We've got two operators to run it, and we've reduced it to three basic motions. One side of the pneumatics opens and closes the jaws. One set moves it backwards and forwards. And the third set runs the pterygoids in the roof of the mouth. The pterygoids are the terminator teeth, and no other ocean predator has them. A second set of teeth running down the roof of the mouth. These are a truly evil adaptation. They actually work independently to move the prey backwards in the throat. 
and also to hold it still, to pin it down as it opens its mouth for the next bite. Now we can see how these jaws worked in deadly unison. The bite, the ratcheting jaw, the terminated teeth. But what would the monster's first bite do to any creature unlucky enough to get on the wrong end of these teeth? Mosasaurus had a really big bite. So we've got a piece of foam that would be about the same size as an eight or nine foot long shark or maybe part of the neck of a long neck plesiosaur. We're gonna put it sideways in this Mosasaur model's mouth and just see exactly what would have happened. Well, that's gonna leave a mark, isn't it? That's a broken neck. I'm pretty convinced that this thing would have probably killed something with the first bite. First time it bit down and ratcheted back like that, the thing's neck is broken. The next test is to measure the capacity of its bite. Very simply, when our metal mosasaur chomps, how much artificial meat goes into its mouth? We've got this piece of foam with four inch squares painted on it. We're gonna feed it to this mosasaur and see how much with each bite this thing would have dragged its prey down its throat. In one bite, our mosasaur consumes well over a meter of flesh. That means this mosasaur could eat a six meter animal in five bites, or an adult human in a single gulp. It's not just the size of the bite. Inside the mouth, the teeth are virtual meat hooks. Dr. Lamb demonstrates with a lump of ballistics gel, which is similar in consistency to human flesh. If you put a piece of meat in the mouth, it can't move out because the tips of the teeth grab it like a fish hook. So we're just gonna see if we can put this up here on these teeth. You can't come out this way as you're caught on these teeth. The only way you can really go is further into the mouth, which is really not the direction you want to be going. And let's just see what happens here. Well, I don't think there's any doubt that you wouldn't want to be a swimmer in a late Cretaceous ocean. You can actually see tooth marks where it just cut right through about 10 pounds of flesh like it was just butter. That would be nasty. The only good thing about this is that you'd probably be in shock after a bite like this. Maybe you wouldn't feel the rest of it. The next test is how the jaws perform eating simulated live prey. The first fish is immediately trapped on the barb-like teeth. And the rest, well, straight down the old mosasaur hatch. In 20 seconds, our captive mosasaur can easily eat 230 kilograms of fish, simply because it doesn't bother to chew it. There's a rapidly vanishing cloud of red and a few scales, and that's all that's left of it. Finally, they test an item that Mosasaur never ate. what we learned by that, but that was, uh, was quite satisfying. It's abundantly clear why Mosasaur is the ultimate success story of evolution, growing from a meter-long lizard into an alpha predator. Although this super beast drove all its enemies into extinction, fossil evidence suggests another enemy took their place. 
And this enemy is something the Mosasaur has seen, but never battled before. From its humble beginnings as a meter-long lizard, Mosasaurs evolved into the most dominant mega-beast the world has ever seen. Nothing else in the ocean can kill it, let alone live with it. But a threat did possibly come from one direction. What we're looking at here is what I would like to call a paleo crime scene. It's a very old cold case file. Scientists studying Mosasaur fossils find evidence of attacks on these giant reptiles. There's a healed bite mark here, this raised ridge. There's a second puncture wound here with this lip of reactive healed bone around it. There are two marks up here on the top of the skull, and it probably killed the, the animal fairly quickly. What animal is vicious enough to attack the deadliest creature in the sea? And we can measure the distance between those bites, and we can marry it up with the jaw of another larger mosasaur, and the teeth fit perfectly into those holes. It makes perfect sense. The only thing Mosasaur had to fear may have been Mosasaur itself. Experts think that Mosasaurs engaged in snout wrestling or face biting to establish dominance. We see really analogous behavior in modern saltwater crocs. Almost always the males, and they're defending a breeding or feeding territory. The saw battle unfolds like a bizarre undersea ballet. When one establishes dominance, the other gives up and swims away. This type of competition is common animal behavior. But scientists uncover something shocking in this particular set of fossils. Evidence suggests not simple predation, but something akin to murder. We've got the fossil evidence that shows that mosasaurs killed other mosasaurs, and they didn't eat them. I mean, it wasn't for food. By looking at the damage on the skull, Everhart believes that this wrestling match turned deadly. The fossil evidence shows the dominant Mosasaur chomps on his opponent's skull. And as the skull of the Mosasaur rolled to the side, these teeth pulled out and left these big drag marks across the bone, very deep wounds. Not only is the skull crushed, but evidence suggests the killer then broke its victim's neck. We found the neck laying off like this at a 45 degree angle to the skull, indicating that it's probably broken right up here next to the brain case. Not even great white sharks or saltwater crocodiles deliberately kill their own kind. They killed, kind of like humans, they killed for other reasons than for food. And uh, mosasaurs were, were different in that regard. We don't see that in very many other animal groups. Still, scientists believe this gladiator-like behavior would not have caused the mosasaur to become extinct. In fact, they seemed to thrive on violence. 70 million years ago, with no other competition in sight, Mosasaurs continued to evolve, becoming even more diverse. There's well over 50 species of Mosasaurs. They began moving from the ocean into fresh water, seeking prey in swamps, estuaries, and rivers. Nothing on Earth could have stopped these monster creatures. Nothing on Earth, that is. It took a 10 kilometer wide chunk of rock that slammed into the earth 65 million years ago to end the reign of the Mosasaur. We're talking about something that released as much energy as every nuclear weapon on the planet times 1,000 set off all at once. 
The magnitude of this blast caused a shock wave of earthquakes and volcanoes. Mega tsunamis race across the oceans. A cloud of superheated dust and molten rain fills the atmosphere, blocking out almost all the sunlight. This devastates the food chain. 75% of the species on Earth are wiped out. With its food supply drastically reduced, the Mosasaur is doomed. At the end of the Cretaceous, uh, there was a huge extinction on Earth, and approximately 65% of all species on Earth died out. This is the same time period that dinosaurs died out. And to date, there have been close to 100 different published theories about this extinction. There's only one that explains the majority of the evidence, and that's the idea that a very large meteorite or asteroid impacted Earth and the energy release from that impact caused the extinction. And the best way to explain the effects of that uh, extinction pattern, what you see in terms of which animals survive and which animals go extinct, is something called the energy pyramid. And what it means is you get something that's a pyramid shape. The base of the pyramid is plants. That's where most of the biomass occurs. And the apex predator is at the top of the pyramid. Well, in the Cretaceous Oceans, the base of the energy pyramid is one-celled microscopic algae that live in the oceans. And the apex predator is the Mosasaur. You knock out half the bottom of the pyramid, and suddenly your pyramid collapses. And you're left with the base of the pyramid and the middle part of the pyramid. The top predators are gone. They're the first things to go. And that really explains pretty well what we see with this extinction pattern at the end of the Cretaceous. This cataclysmic event paved the way for the development of mammals and eventually humans. But if the comet had missed and mosasaurs had been allowed to thrive, how different would our world be? We wouldn't have any whales or dolphins or porpoises or seals, or sea lions. The oceans and all its fish would belong to the mosasaurs. Bring her down. Bring her down. Fishermen would find very little to catch if indeed there were humans on the planet at all. These would be very ferocious, uh, very hungry, active marine animals that uh, you wouldn't want to share your ocean with. It's frightening and fascinating to contemplate what might have been had these mega beasts survived. The waters of the oceans around the world being patrolled by these giant killing machines. 15 meters long, with jaws the size of T-Rex, always waiting, just offshore.